For our last look into arrays, before we continue to use arrays for the rest of the semester, we want to think about arrays of arrays, um, of course, right? Because we want to think about how to use every um, technique to its maximal effect. And this turns out to be really useful, anything with matrices, uh, if you think about the pixels on your screen. Um, we could organize them as one long list, but we can also org organize them like as one array for each row of pixels, and that might be more convenient. So this is called a multi-dimensional array, and in particular, if we have arrays of arrays, then it's going to be two-dimensional. Um, so we're going to have to have nested loops in order to do anything. Um, to process because the structure of our code is going to have to follow the structure of the data that we're working on. Um, but we also are going to have to do allocation in a different way. Um, so we can do things like with, so I'll say option one, use a type def like C string. Right, so what we just made in the previous video was an array of strings, and each one of those C strings is really an array of chars, so that works. But it's very limited is that each inner array must have fixed size, right? Because in order to allocate that all at once, we have to know the size of each piece of the outer array. Um, and so in the case of C strings, we just said, okay, they're all 128 bytes. But that's not always going to make sense for what we want to do. And so the more general option, but also the more challenging one for us to write, is to make an array of pointers and then separately allocate each row. And then allocate each row of the array or each sub inner array using calic. And so let's see how that works. Um, so it's going to be more calyx, more freeze, but it's going to also give us that flexibility of being able to have an array containing a number of arrays of any size. So to understand two-dimensional arrays, I want to look at an example, which is uh, something about like calorie counting. So this is going to ask me how many days am I counting calories for and how many meals per day. So... I'll say three meals, and then maybe I have a nice big lunch and a smallish dinner or something, and then on day two I have a gigantic breakfast, uh, but then I eat almost nothing for lunch and dinner. Um, okay, fine. So that's something that we might want to do. And of course, this program doesn't work yet. It doesn't actually create these arrays, and, and then therefore it doesn't actually count up the total at the end. So that's what we have to try to fill in. So this is the program that does exactly what you just saw. And what's missing is the part of having the two-dimensional arrays. And before we try to write the code to do this, let's draw a picture of what we want to be happening. So just remember that there are two variables that we're reading in so far are days and meals per day. So let's draw this in terms of like a stack heap diagram. And in main, this is on the stack, we have uh, days, which in that example was two, and meals per day, which I'm just writing MPD, which was three. And now we want to have, uh, you know, in total of six entries for doubles for those individual calorie amounts. And what we really want is two arrays, each uh, of three doubles, right? So two arrays, like one per day, and then these three each is because that's how many meals per day. So what this is, is really two levels. Um, so we have an outer array. So the, the inner arrays are like the arrays for each day. So that's the inner array. And the outer array is what's holding each of those inner arrays. So here's what that's going to look like. Uh, everything is going to be allocated in the heap. So let's say we have just call this meals. 
So all this is going to be is a pointer because remember that's what it looks like for heap allocation is that anything in main is just a pointer out to an array. And so here's our outer array. It's going to have size 2. So this is the outer array. And what each one of these is supposed to be. Each one of these is supposed to itself be an array of size 3 now. And so that means that each one of those being uh, is going to be a separate heap allocated array to three doubles. And then that'll actually have the calorie amounts, you know, whatever I put, 500, 1,000, 800, or something like that. I think I put 1,200 the second day, and then I think this might be what I write. So what makes this more complicated is that we have these, like, two levels of arrays. And you see why that is that way is because each one of these is allocated separately, like, per each day. And then we have to store all of those allocations somewhere. So we have this is what's called the outer array here. So when we say outer array, what I'm referring to there is this one. And the inner arrays are going to be like these two guys over here. Okay, let me get that red out of here so it doesn't confuse us too much. Now we have to think about how to actually make this thing. And the important thing to know is that each one of these arrows, when we draw a box and, and draw that arrow, that is a call to calic. So we need a call to calic to make this outer array. But when we do that, it's just going to be two null pointers that don't point to anything. So we have to separately call calic for each element of that outer array to make the inner array. And so what we're going to see is one call to calic like initially for outside the loop. And then we need to have a loop which does these inner allocations uh, here. So let's see how that works in code now that we've drawn all these nice pictures. To allocate this 2D array, um, what we're going to have to do, and I'm not going to write down the variables yet, I'm just going to write down the calyx, is on the outside I'm going to say how many things do I want for that outer array is the number of days. And the size of each one is going to be, each one is going to be a pointer. So it's going to be the size of a pointer to a double. So the size of double star, because that's what each of the inner array elements is. And then I'm going to have to have a loop. We could have used i here, but I think that when we start to get into double arrays, it can be nice to name your indices so you remember which uh, array that goes with. And uh, so now... What do I want to do for each one is I have to make the inner array. And each inner array has meals per day. And each one of those things in the inner array is actually a double. So size of double. And then now let's think about what are the actual things that we're assigning to. So this is just calling calic, but then not saving it anywhere. It doesn't really make sense. Um, what's the type of this outer one? Well, remember, the type of any array is going to be a pointer to the array that we want. So the type of each calic here is going to be a double star. And then we have an array of those, so it's going to be a pointer to a double star, which means that type is called double star star. So two asterisks means a pointer to an array of doubles, or an array of arrays of doubles. So I'll call this meals. And then what's each one on the inside? We could make a separate variable here, but again, if we just made that variable in the for loop, like double star... Um, per day like this, then okay, we did that, but now that variable is lost the next iteration through the loop. We have to save these pointers into the outer array. So instead of this, we need to do meals index day index day in like that um, in order to get those set up. So what we've done now in this outer allocation and this loop of inner allocations is exactly make this picture with all the boxes. And now it's just a matter of filling those in. So let's see how that works. As we're reading in each value, we need to assign it into that 2D array. So how do we get there? Um, what we're trying to do is we're always starting from main, and we have to like follow this arrow and then into one of these indices of the outer array and then follow into one of the indices of the inner array. And the way that looks like in terms of syntax is you have two square brackets. So you're going to say meals and the outer index. That's going to follow into the one of the pointers um, for the outer array. Then we need another square brackets for the meal index to follow into one of those specific values in the inner array. And then we'll do the assignment like that. So that's what you'll see a lot when we're dealing with 
2 d arrays is you'll have two square brackets like this right next to each other, first for the outer index and then for the inner index. And then we'll see the same thing down here when we're trying to count them up. What we're going to say is total cals plus equals, uh, and then it's going to be this same exact syntax, meals with those two indexes. Of course, it depends on which variable names I use for the indices down here, but I use the same variable names. And so now this should actually work. Um, to do everything. So we allocated with a loop, then we have to read things in using this double index, and then we, we added up those calories using another uh, nested for loop and a double index. Let's check it out. So I'll do the same thing as before. Three meals each on two days, and I'll just do the same amounts. Um, and let's see what it says. 3,700 total, so that seems about right. Um, and of course, the, the power of this is that those numbers could really be anything. We could do this for 2,000 days, even for 2 million days, uh, if we wanted to, uh, because it's we're using heap allocation, so we really have a lot of flexibility there. There's just one more thing that should bother you, which is we also need to deallocate. So we need to match each of our calloc calls with a free call. And the key thing here, if you think about it for a second, is that we have to do the freeing, and here now I'll use index i. Um, we have to do the freeing in the opposite order of how we allocated. So free meals i. We have to do the freeing in a loop of each inner array, and then we can free the outer array. Why is that? Well, if you think back at our picture, we have to you know delete all these arrays. But if we delete this array here first, that's going to be a big problem because once that's gone, we can't even access those inner arrays to, to free them. So that's why you need to first wipe out each of these. And then now we're safe to wipe out that outer array. And that's what we're doing here. So of course, you won't notice any difference because we're, we didn't make anything that big in this example program. If we run it again, it would seem to work exactly the same. But uh, if we had a long running program or something that was doing a lot of allocation and deallocation, it's important to know how to deallocate a double array. The last thing I'll say about double arrays is just that it's complicated and everything is really applying the same principles that we know before, but now applying them on two levels deep and it gets harder. So just be patient with yourself when you're getting started with doubles array. This is your very first interesting, uh, first input introduction to this topic. Uh, so it's going to be tough and a little slow going at first, but then you'll get more comfortable and this will also become second nature uh, as time goes on. So just be patient with yourself because it takes a little bit more thinking to think about how to go to two levels of double arrays like this picture.